All right, welcome back to another episode of Cameo Podcast here at Redbeard once again. Kind of getting back into my normal little ramble in, but this is a bonus episode. Um, I wasn't planning on releasing this episode so quickly, uh, but my friends over at Ready at Door gave me $100 to, to give away or do whatever I want with, eat. Um, but I've decided to give it away as soon as I get a thousand people in the, the community Facebook group. So what, if we make it to a thousand people by Friday or whenever we make it to a thousand people, I'll give that uh, hundred dollar GC away, which means you get to choose like one of nine different Kamloops restaurants to have your food delivered straight to your door. Like a hundred dollars. Like I use ready at door for like uh, lasagna the other day. It cost me 23 bucks. And that's probably enough for like three people, but I ate it myself. But um, anyways, go support them. Uh, Sachin and Rajit, they're, they're great guys. Really, really like their app. And also, this is a bonus episode because the next person, you know, they did me a solid as well. They helped uh, me out with my photo shoot with White Olive Photography, Melissa D'Agostino. Um, for my wife's birthday, I gave her uh, this photo shoot because, and I ruined all the photos. And uh, Cassie Watt did the makeup. Hello. Sorry, I haven't looked at you in the eye yet. I did my <laughs> weird preamble. No, it's all good. <laughs> cool. And so we're at Red Beard. We traded. We bartered. You know, we did some old school handshake deal yeah. business. How long have you been uh, in the makeup industry? I'm going into my fourth year right now. Um, I worked at uh, MAC Cosmetics up in Hudson's Bay for a year. And then I decided I kind of wanted to do it on my own. And I decided to go back to university. So um, I'm going into my third year on my own. And one of those years was at MAC. Is there a MAC in Kamloops? Or is that like yes. A... Yeah, I worked at the MAC in Kamloops right when it opened. Okay, so, yeah. so so that where is that again? It's in the Hudson's Bay in the mall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I don't go to the Aberdeen Mall. Very I don't often. go very often anymore either. I don't cross <laughs> the river if I don't have to at all. I'm the opposite. I don't come on this side of the river if I don't have to. So ah, uh, no, no. <laughs> like if if I'm going up the hill, that means business, <laughs> That's and like that the means chores, town, yeah. uh, like chores and business. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's not for me. So, so you've done that for four years. Yeah. Is, it, is that sustaining you full-time now? Um, well, it's kind of crazy. I'm in school full-time, and then I also work with a family who has an autistic son. I work with him a couple days a week. Oh, wow. And then makeup was just kind of a side thing that I did for a while, and now it's kind of turning into more of a full-time thing. Um, but I never really... I, mean, I never really expected that, so it's just kind of been like adjusting to that because nice. it was supposed to just be a couple days a week, and now it's turning into every day of the week. So, how did you uh, end up working with the autistic family? Is that an educational background, or? Um, yeah, well, actually, when I was in high school, it was kind of a funny story. I didn't want to take PE class, and the only option was to be a TA in a special education's room. And so I did it because I really hated PE and I actually ended up really loving it and decided I wanted to go to university for that. And then when I graduated, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to go right into more schooling after graduating. So I took a year off, worked at Mac and then kind of did some soul searching and decided that I still wanted to work with children with special needs. And then I was looking for something part time. I got introduced to this family and um, started working with them. And this is um, I've been working with them for two years now. So that's kind of like my other passion. I love makeup but I also love working with children with special needs so you're doing the full millennial thing right you, you got a career that you love a passion that you love that yeah. pays and uh, you took time off for soul searching yeah it's kind of crazy <laughs> when people ask me what I do I'm like it's not really like a simple this is my job answer it's kind of like a little bit of everything but I find that kind of keeps me excited about things that I'm doing I'm not like stagnating in one thing all the time I'm always kind of switching up what I'm doing and who I'm working with and where I'm going which is nice yeah totally what direction do you kind of see yourself taking and how is like how do you think being in Kamloops has given you that opportunity that you might not have had at other places I think it's nice like I mean with TRU being here I can go to school full-time and then still have time to do these other things and I've made really like with my makeup I've made really great connections like Melissa D'Agostini and all those people getting to work with amazing photographers and vendors in Kamloops and then still being in school and working, it kind of gives me a bunch of avenues to work down, which is nice. Um, I used to think that once I graduated university, I would kind of stop doing makeup and that would be the end of it. And then as makeup kind of kept going and it kept growing and I kept getting booked for more things, I um, 
kind of found out I don't think that'll be something I can just quit in five yeah. years. So I don't know. I kind of hope that I could just keep doing what I'm doing, be a teacher, work with the special needs students, and then in my summers that are off, I could still yeah. be doing makeup, which is nice because the career kind of allows you to have weekends off and summers off and all the holidays off, which is nice. So it's totally. not like a full year-round thing, which is nice. So like the way what I'm hearing you say is to get yourself through school, <laughs> you did makeup. Yeah. Where my friends dealt drugs. <laughs> but hey, you know, we're making Whatever ends meet. Whatever guess. works, yeah. right? So, um, like, I've been on this, like, this tear right now of, like, start local, go global. Yep. Right? And, like, I see that happening a lot here in Kamloops. Totally. And there's a lot of parallels and there's a lot of opportunities. As a makeup artist, mm -hmm. right, like, how do you see your business going global even though you are, you know, literally hands-on brushing... People in Kamloops? People in Kamloops, right? Yeah. Such as my wife. <laughs> yeah, including your wife. Um, I think Instagram has a big part in that, just being able to reach more people. Every once in a while, I'll have someone, like, comment on my stuff or send me a message who's literally in, like, today with someone from Sweden, and it just kind of opens things up bigger. And then there's also a few people in Kamloops, like there's... Um, a designer named Del, um, Delaine Dixon, and she um, has oh, been. I know her. Yeah, she's been talking to me about coming with her to some of her sh um, shows and shoots. That like she was talking about one in Amsterdam, one in Vegas. So like just connecting yourself with the right people in Canada who are doing global things and kind of working off of them and collaborating to help everyone grow, kind of thing. Yeah. It, it it's supposed to be seven degrees of separation, but in Kamloops, yeah. it's more like one degree of I know. separation. Kamloops, everyone knows everyone, and it's like finding those connections and building a community that can help you, and then you can help them too. It kind of everybody supports everyone, which is really nice. Yeah, so to tell you about this dish I'm supposed to try and eat. It smells really good. Um, I can't remember the name, Yeah. but I sat over there and met yeah. someone named Anatong yeah. the, the other day. Yeah. And he said this is like their main street food. Oh, really? In uh, where he comes from in Mumb Mumbai. Mumbai, yeah. And he said the opportunity here is just crazy because like it's so easy to uh, get exposure in oh, Kamloops yeah. Yeah, for compared sure. to Mumbai when there's 30 million people <laughs> Everyone, yeah, yeah. fighting, and and that's why you know we're seeing you know uh, such an increase of Indian students through TRU. Yeah. And they're highly educated. Totally. Um, what uh, what opportunities has TRU given you? Um, that maybe you wouldn't have received out, outside of, you know, that environment of being in such a small town where everything's 15 minutes. Well, I mean, it is nice. Like, I mean, on campus, there's people, there's people I've gone to school with since I was in kindergarten. So there's lots of people that I know. And then, like you said, there's lots of people from literally all over the world at TRU, which is nice as well. I've met so many people. Even when I worked at Mac, like the international students that would come into Mac all the time, it gave me so much experience um, working with all people of different ages, sexes, religions, men, women, um, which is, I don't think I would have gotten, you know, when we live in such a small town, but it's big at the same time. It's kind of weird that way. Um, totally. But it just, a lot of diversity, which is nice. And in my classes, it's not like it's just a room full of 20-year-old females. There's literally people from all walks of life, people from across the world, people from who's lived here their whole life. There's, there's never just like, you know, this is the demographic of TRU. There's always different people. Totally. Yeah. So... Another concept I'm playing with a lot yep. is this idea of small city marketing. Mm -hmm. right? I wanted to start a blog back in 2014, 2015 about small city marketing. Yep. And social media is the perfect translation of, translation mm -hmm. of small city marketing, right? If yep. you understand how to market and sell yourself in cam moves, you can do it on social media. Yeah. The problem is people on social media aren't ready to be as aggressive as they need to be. True, yeah. Because yep. in cam moves, marketing is sales, mm -hmm. where other places... Like Mumbai, yeah. you know, marketing is tactics and strategy, totally. sales is sales, right? Yeah. And they're so much further along. Mm -hmm. But we have this ability that since we're like in Kamloops, yeah. with TRU, is like a microcosm for you can test to begin with. Yeah. Right? Like you could become the influencer of TRU and then go to Kamloops and then whatever it be. Yeah. Yeah. How do you see yourself like as a business owner? as a female entrepreneur becoming this like influencer personality and is that something you struggle with? Um, I think I struggled with it up until the, like the past few months. I think being authentic and putting yourself out there on social media is is hard. Um, but I think the moment that I started becoming more authentic and really being myself and showing 
all sides of my life is the moment that I saw my followers increase or my demand go up or people just messaging me wanting to go for coffee, not necessarily wanting to, you know, book a service with me, which I think helped grow my brand and helped, like you said, create more of an influencer status. Um, so even though someone might message me and not even have a care about booking me for makeup, but just making those connections and next time maybe they're out shopping, they send me a message and ask me for a recommendation on makeup. That kind of took it from just being a service based, like you said, sales kind of thing, yeah. into more of an influencer and making connections and kind of building your following a little bit more. Yeah. And I did struggle with that in the beginning. I would never put myself, like, it was only my work. I never put my face on my Instagram. I never really talked. And then it was almost like the moment that it flipped in my brain that if I show myself on there, people get to know me instead of, like, me as a brand instead of just yeah. my work. Yeah, no, exactly. And it's, it's hard for people to put themselves out there. Oh, for sure. It's so nerve-wracking. Um, because you end up getting a lot of blowback. I've been fighting with my mom about that a lot lately. <laughs> but have you seen any negative a aspects come out of this like new way of business developing? And I think the negative stuff, honestly, is, is more in my head. I think it's me me worrying about what are people going to say and I don't even know I don't know what they're saying so I think the biggest thing for me is just making sure that I'm doing what makes me happy and I'm happy with the content that I'm putting out and people will have their opinions and I think you can't get caught up on that and, you, and I mean I can't say that I don't because I do it does definitely affects me um, but I haven't had anyone be outright to my face negative I think it's more so me in my head conjuring up the worst that could possibly happen but it's not really I don't think it's actually there I think it's more in my head you're lucky. <laughs> I Maybe get to, it does happen, I, I get I to just straight up know. fight with people and then, and then fight with my head at the same time. I'm which, not really like that aggressive on Instagram type. I'll just kind of like keep it in my head. So yeah, <laughs> See, I figure there has to be one person who is aggressive on Instagram. Yes. So I'll I'll You'll be that person. The, that one for That's us. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> After you left, um, do my wife's makeup. Yeah. She was very embarrassed of me and oh, no, no. whatever being. That's where I reached out. Like sorry yeah. for being too aggressive. <laughs> Because it's, it's difficult for me to, like, describe depression. difficult for me to describe entrepreneurship. Yes. That aggressive side has to come out in business to sometimes move forward. For sure. But definitely. did I rattle you at all? Oh, no, no. I'm, I feel like I present myself in a passive way, but, like, inside. I had a, com um, a conversation with Alicia from um, Linden & Co., actually, and I was like, people always say I'm so sweet, and I'm such a sweetheart on Instagram, and then I think when I'm at home, I'm not like that, so I think I just portray myself that way, but seriously, it didn't affect me at all. My family is crazy. We, they live on a farm out in Barnetville. I'm definitely... I'm, I'm not a judgmental person at all, so Where do I was, they live in Barnetville? Yeah, yeah, so... Nice. Definitely not, like, a hoity toity kind of person it seriously so, didn't so you were born me. and raised in Kamloops yeah I lived here my whole life whole life whole life yeah what's the biggest change you've seen like how and, and how can you live your whole life here and not have been to Redbeard like, like <laughs> my my growth <laughs> as a creator in Kamloops yeah. is mapped out by the growth of this business well I think I'm gonna have to start coming here more often because everybody says that so I'm definitely have to come across the bridge a little bit more um, but I think since I've lived here, I, I was having this conversation with someone the other day was just how much it's grown. And like, just, I think about like Barnardville was Barnardville and then Juniper and Rose Hill. And now it's all kind of molding into one. Like there's no separation anymore. And just the, in the creative community, I, and maybe it was because I wasn't as involved, but now looking at it, like there's people here who are doing amazing things that are being recognized globally or on a larger scale. And I don't know if I just wasn't as immersed, so I didn't notice that as much. But now I'm like, like, like I was talking about Delane, she's off doing Fashion Week in New York. I didn't know anyone doing that yep. a few years ago. And now that's just like every other person's off doing their thing and it's really cool to see these people grow from you know people that I went to high school with are now off doing these super huge adventures yeah no I've, I've got some people in touch saying hey can you do cell phone interviews I'm like well <laughs> yeah but I don't really it's know how really to do them thing. well yet. yeah, yeah. Um, that's why the tech is in person yeah and that's part of what the project is so it makes it easier to, to make stuff out but yeah there's there's some pe like a lot of really amazing talent in this city for sure who uh, who have you been watching? Like I've been working with and watching Adrian Falk. Okay. I don't know, you know, had him on the podcast earlier. I've been yep. watching him long, long yep. time. Yep. Um, but who are you keeping your eyes out? 
what talent are you seeing brewing? Um, well, I would have to say to start off with Alicia from Linden & Co. She's been really um, instrumental in helping me kind of, like I was talking about earlier, putting my brand out there and putting myself more on Instagram. She's been a great person to kind of vent to and, and kind of throw ideas off. And then she actually gave me Melissa's name from White Olive Photo, and we worked together on a photo shoot. And I think her work is spectacular, and she's going to be big. She's And even since the time that I've known her, she's grown as a photographer, and her Instagram has really started to take off. Um, so those are the two kind of big ones in my mind that I like to kind of work with and bounce ideas off of. And I think we both, I collaborate with both of them really well, and we have a lot of similar outlooks on our businesses and how we like to present ourselves on Instagram and as entrepreneurs. And then they're both... Um, kind of involved in coffee and confetti too, which is nice because it kind of allows us to all work together and kind of not only in a business sense, but just in a friendship way as well too. Wait, so you're part of the coffee and confetti? I am, yeah. You get one half of it? No, so Alicia and Carly um, yep. were the founders, and then there was, I think, six or seven girls, and we all were like the core members, and yep. then we all kind of met and bounced ideas off of each other, and then we um, all kind of planned the event together. But I'm not, social I'm not media a mafia. Yeah, it's actually really cool. It's something that is super unique. I don't think there's anything in Kamloops that really offers what coffee and confetti is, and I think it's going to be big. I think it's just. Yeah. I mean, it's new, so it's there's still. No, pink I, I, I see what what they're doing, and and I I tried and failed that avenue by creating a team of cameo, <laughs> but it didn't work. But um, it's always hard when you have a group of people. Like, it, there's never going to be something that just runs completely smoothly. Yeah. Well, I was more aggressive. Like, I would just give people like. You know the keys to the kingdom. Be like, here, <laughs> go, Take go, go. go! Try and do something. <laughs> yeah. You know, let's see what uh, what you produce. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's exciting to see coffee and confetti, and yeah, I'm it's excited exciting for to it. see a lot of uh, people set up their social media game. I, I saw Alpha and Omega Productions are yep. getting a social media. Carla May is getting a social media, and like these skills that you know our generation have totally are highly needed. Oh, for sure. But the irony is, like, no one's even looking at Snapchat in this town. No. It's kind of irrelevant. Like, like that's my new project, is Snapchat. Snapchat. How, do I, how do I figure out Snapchat? I don't think I've used Snapchat since I was in, like, grade 10. That was when it was cool. And then now you I don't had even it, know. You had Snapchat in grade 10? Oh, yeah. How old are you? I'm 20. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. I'm old as shit. I'm a dad. <laughs> I'm 26. I'm legally stoned. <laughs> yeah. And... <laughs> Damn! All I know, right, I'm young. shit. Yeah, man. Like I, when I when I came to to Kamloops, yep. I still had a BlackBerry. <laughs> well, I had that was my first phone was a BlackBerry. So See, I'm from like Kitchener Waterloo area, which is like okay. where BlackBerry is from. Yep. So when I came out west, my mom bought a BlackBerry straight from the factory from her friends. Oh, that's you know, cool. yeah. cash deal. Yeah. And uh, popped a SIM card in and said, <laughs> "There you go." You're, uh, you're you're staying in touch, and now I'm still really bad at staying in touch. <laughs> it's hard being like your phone is like something you feel like you're always have to reply, and you're always kind of working, and it's hard to like put that boundary aside and say like I don't need to be on my phone 24 seven. Yeah, no, my my wife's been training me that right because I <laughs> I don't spend much time with the kid. Yeah, it's hard. Or if I am, like I'm on the laptop, on, and I'm bad for that. I'll be like, let's watch a movie, and then I sit on my phone the entire time. I don't even know what happened in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's because like the idea of a five minute response time is what's ingrained into me from oh, like sure. my. Um, I built a social. I, I built a BDC for okay. um, dealerintelligence.ca. Like I was with them from the beginning, and yep. It, it, you know, I built a client service base of based on respond to people in five minutes <laughs> and uh, if you do that you'll be successful so it's like really really challenging but we're yeah. in this weird place of speed yes but Kamloops doesn't isn't as fast that's true I mean it's, <laughs> it's hard for me like I always I'm like a hard worker I'm always like if someone messages me if it's three in the morning I'll reply and then I have to be like you know what I don't need to be emailing people back, like laying in my bed in the dark, like typing away. Like, can you wait till the morning? But it's hard. Like when you have that, like you said, when it's ingrained in you, you feel like you you need to to be successful. You need to be available all the time. Yeah, I got like 20 emails 
yeah. in like my Instagram DMs yeah. that I've like lost and just forgotten <laughs> and don't care to respond to. I know I have to keep a list and keep it all straight. And then sometimes people will book me and then I'll forget to write it down or something. Cause it's just like constant all the time. You're like yeah. at the grocery store and you have to remember to go home and write this down. So this is my thing though too. Is like it's a weird thing of like it's like you you're you're in charge of the economy of you too, right? Yes. Like you control the supply and the demand of it. So like. I make myself a little bit more exclusive, but really I'm just forgetting to respond <laughs> to a DM. But you make it look like you were. Right? Like, yeah. cause, cause, you know, so it's, uh, I don't know if it drives the price up or down, but <laughs> well, it, it, it's interesting. Use it to your advantage. What, um, what's your, like, <laughs> like right now it just blows my mind that like, so this is what I'm playing with Snapchat right now. Yes, yes, yeah is Snapchat is basically like uh, Domains 2.0. Mm-hmm. If I could get just podcast as an, uh, a Snapchat handle, oh, uh, I see what right? you're saying, yeah. yeah. Think of all the people who are just looking for podcast mm-hmm. when, when they finally flood to Snapchat, Yeah. right? Yeah. So I have at Cameo.ca, which is obviously the most important handle. Yeah. I tried to buy Cameo. Is it gone? This, but... Uh, it's gone. It's taken by this lady in New Zealand. Weird. And uh, I offered her a hundred dollars Canadian. She wanted five G's. What for a Snapchat name? Yeah. Well, she she because I want it, and she knows. So she that knows that she she can get she, that? she can know that I would pay that if I had the money. Yeah. But it's more like in the dark web of Snapchat. Yeah. People are buying and selling handles really? for like no hundred bucks, and then flipping for fifteen hundred bucks. There's really? like an amazing podcast called Reply All, what the Snapchat thief, <laughs> and it's just like the most mind blowing thing of like, man, there's this economy of having like a handle. Like, if I want to be podcaster, yeah. or if I want to be like Naruto, because they all love their anime and manga, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. The the memes of it all, <laughs> right? Because they're all between our ages yes yeah um but yeah anyways they also like soundcloud rap do you like soundcloud rap i have soundcloud on my i'm, I'm so bad i use like a little spotify a little soundcloud a little apple music i if i have time to go and like look for people and spend the time finding new music i'll do it but sometimes it's it's time consuming when i was younger i used to be really into that and like i would find new music all and would have the coolest newest thing and then as i got older i just kind of it's time consuming. I don't have time to sit at home and So who do you listen to? What sort of uh, music do you listen to then? I kind of like a little bit of everything lately. I've been, I kind of like old music. Like I'm kind of an old grandma that way. I really like, like Fleetwood Mac and like the Eagles, that oh, okay. kind of stuff. Um, so do you get along with Aaron at the Mattress King who likes his like <laughs> old people music? I and do. then like I put on like, <laughs> you know, this like SoundCloud hip hop stuff and like he's like, what is this? I do like rap, like, but I don't, I'm not really into like today's rap like the like Migos and all those kind of people it's not really my thing like I'm I'm into more like if I'm gonna listen to it it's gonna be the older stuff but I'm, I, other than that I'm pretty open to anything have you been uh, watching Madison Old's career or yeah, music actually yeah I've seen her perform a couple times actually hmm. um, and I follow her on Instagram she seems like she that's another person I think is gonna get big she, yeah no yeah. like she she just was touring around nationally yeah. recently and I guess she's got an and album coming out they soon. won the CMT um, I can't remember what it was called it was like a national competition I think and they won and they got to go to Nashville um, she it was like was her and her friend band. Bees and the Bear Bones yes. the country yeah. th- girls they won like the Chevy tailgate yes, that's it. tour yes. or something or, or got on it at least yes um, and then I guess Madison did her Beyonce or whatever be. <laughs> she separated from. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the story. <laughs> I don't of really that. either, but I have heard them sing a few times before. Like I think she was in Bees and the Bare Bones at that yeah. time, but she is amazing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what what sort of things around campus do you think people don't know a lot about? As uh, someone who's grew up here, think you should share. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know. I feel like. I feel like when you grow up here, Kamloops, everything just seems like home. I was talking to someone about that the other day. We're so lucky to live in such a beautiful place. And to me, I'm like, oh, it's just home. Like, this is just Kamloops, and this is just where I live. Um, I think growing up on the other side of town out in Barnetville kind of shaped me to be the person I am today. And we live on a farm with 
goats and pigs and horses and all of that kind of stuff. And so I, I kind of enjoyed all of my friends were like sticking out and going to parties, but it wasn't really an option for me because where was I going to go? So I think living out there and um, I grew up riding horses and I did that really competitive, competitively for a while. And um, I think there's... What, what type of uh, riding horses? Um, I used to barrel race when I was younger. And then when I was in grade nine or ten, I just, um, decided to start riding cutting horses. I was actually in the national rankings for it and I did it super competitively until I graduated. And oh, wow. it was kind of my life. I was... Not to toot my own horn, but I was very good at it. And then um, when I graduated and got a job and everything, it just wasn't feasible anymore. But there, that community here, I, I don't really talk about it too much, but it actually is like a really awesome group of people. In Have town. you ever worn cowboy boots to school? No, I wasn't one of those people. Oh, I was like, I kept it very separate. Like that was my like home life. You, then... you weren't like known as horse girl? No, I always like, my friends would always tag me in that. And I'd be like, no, I'm not horse girl. Like, I love that. Was but, there a like, horse girl? Oh, yeah. Oh, I went to like RLC out in Barnerville. There was horse girls everywhere. Maybe I was when I was younger, but like, as soon as I got into high school, I was like, no way. No? No. no. It wasn't me. You didn't read like the novels and... <laughs> I was little, but then like I said, as soon as I realized, I was like, no, I'm out. <laughs> Labels are important. It is. You gotta, you gotta have that reputation. You <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? Like, imagine... <laughs> Imagine if you're a you know, horse girl on Instagram right now. Right? I know. Just, I know. just That's like why that was your Instagram handle, <laughs> handle, right? Like you just knew in fifth grade yeah. you were going to be horse girl. That's My boyfriend makes fun of me for that a lot, but it, I, I don't do that. I try not to at least. <laughs> uh, what's the name? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty easy going. Whatever. Be 26 minutes in. Free okay. phone call. You should try this food whatever it is it's called um like it's unbelievable so yeah uh while she tries some of the food i am just trying to rest up from basically a little bit of an intense 24 hours haven't gotten much sleep baby was up i was out late Uh, i've been making a lot of content lately I need to turn that down. I'm outsourcing some stuff, and I'm bringing other people into other things so that I can start building this business um, a bit more sustainably and, uh, you know, expand into other avenues and other projects that I'm interested in. So stay tuned to that. And, uh, yeah, what, what do you think? Oh, it's amazing. I love Indian food. It's my favorite. Yeah, it was like samosas, like chopped on up with like... You wouldn't think that would like with the whatever, like that almost dill sauce on it would be good, but it is. Yeah, it's like really sweet. Like I thought it was going to be like bitter, but like it's like sweet and savory and like... I I don't use those words very often. I actually had butter chicken for dinner, so... Oh, really? It's just Indian night tonight, I guess. (laughs) What I have for dinner? I have trouble eating, actually. Oh, really? Like my, my wife had to like remind me eat... I wish I had that problem. <laughs> yeah, I was passed out on the floor before coming here. Oh, my gosh. And, like, I woke up 15 minutes before I was supposed to be here, pounding back the rest of, like, my yeah. heated up leftovers, and then uh, <laughs> came here. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's you know, funny. It's, uh, that, that's Kevin's for you. Yeah. But um, what's something you miss about your childhood that, you know, is you thought would still exist in Kamloops at this time like something specific to Kamloops yeah like like when you look back like when I go to my hometown and, and be like XYZ is now this that rocked my world that's wrong like you know oh that's tough oh I don't know I feel like whenever you like you think of these things like when you're just like driving down the street and then when someone asks you you can't even remember anymore that's tough um I don't know if I have a good answer for that one. I think everything pretty much is still... You don't like, think much has changed? I, I guess not. I don't know. That's a really tough question. Do you think that's because, like, you're in downtown? Because nothing changes downtown? Maybe. Like, I'm very... Like, I totally admit, I'm, like, in my little bubble, and I, I live in Bonneville. And How do you get downtown. out of that bubble, though? Like, don't you think that bubble's, like, your safety net? And like, Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of a grandma. Like, I like things to be how I know you're them. like my wife I like to do the same things I eat the same foods I go to school go to work come home go to bed at 10 so yeah that could totally be it I'm not like a super adventurous person I wish I was but I'm just kind of a homebody and you, don't, you don't think you thrive in chaos 
No. I don't think no. I would, like I always said, I don't think I would do good if like I moved to Vancouver or something like that. Yeah. Like I like to be busy and I like to work and I don't like to sit at home, but I like knowing, I like, I think that's why I like Camus because everything is how I know it. And then when I go away, I just say, I don't like this. I don't, nothing's constant. And I like that about Camus. It's familiar. I know, I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. I know lots of people here. And so I kind of... But don't you think, though, like, how, like, let's say you go to, to a, short, the, a show with D- Dylan Dixon, right? Yeah. Like, and that's going to expand your mind, right? Like, totally. Like, don't you think you should have that opportunity to give yourself to leave this place? Oh, for sure. I think... To bring stuff back? For sure. I think my mentality is a classic someone who grew up in Kamloops has lived here their whole life and you kind of get like sometimes I think you get like Kamloops syndrome and you get kind of stuck in here and you like kind of do what uh, what's cool in Kamloops and then you kind of get comfortable with it and then I I think it's it's so important for me to break out of that shell but I'm just that like I'm just that kind of like anxious person who likes familiar familiarity I can't say that word so this is where you have your advantage over me uh because you know Kamloops and you've always been here right like we're at this cultural nexus of Kamloops, mm-hmm. of it's deciding its fate, of who it's going to be. Is it going to try and go to the colonial world? Well, it looks like that's a no already. But, like, yeah. you have this opportunity to figure out, like, how do you reach the people of Kamloops the way you always have? For sure, yeah. You know, using these new mediums, right? And, like, the, you know, the coffee and confetti really is just, like, an old-school Kamloops... Uh, be an I group, right? Oh, that, for sure, yeah. That, you know, like, everything's done business, 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 you know, handshake deals, one-to-one, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, I think it's, it's, it's very exciting for any creator, um, yourself included. Mm-hmm. What, what should we chat about at this point? What, any topics do you think we've missed? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think, I mean, I don't, Coffee and confetti, I think, is exciting because there's not something like that for the young females. That was kind of totally. the, the, the high the high niche. There, there's riches yeah. in niches. You, yeah. you got to collaborate with people who have like-minded visions, totally. right? I get it. Yeah. 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 So that was that was something I was super <laughs> excited about. Just having something because, like, for me personally, being 20, female, owning a new business, there wasn't really a group that offered that. Like, there are those networking groups in town, but it was kind of like middle-aged realtor men and I didn't really feel like that was for me so I am excited for that kind of thing and I'm excited to see where the girls take it um but other than that I don't know um I'm not very good cool. on the spot <laughs> well uh where can people learn more about you or reach out if uh, they're interested um I would say Instagram is probably where I'm the most active it's just Cassidy Watt Makeup um I'm trying to be more active on Facebook but I feel like Instagram is where I put most of my effort. Um, and yeah, you can probably see me around TRU or working or around Kamloops because, as I said, I've lived here my whole life, but I am on the other side of the river. So maybe I'll try to come over to Redbeard a little bit more often now that I've come here and tasted the good food. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> have you been to Leon John's? I have. That is my favorite lunch spot in town. It is literally my favorite. It's so good. Yeah, I was, I just, uh, I was there today, picked up a kombucha. What was it? Jalapeno habanero, peach habanero, peach habanero, oh, that something like really that. Good. I don't know. I love spicy. Bye bye bukai, b u k q i. Oh. They're they're at the. Uh, I don't know. They, they did a kombucha workshop. I did a long oh, time ago. Cool. Anyways, thank you, Cassie, for uh, agreeing to meet with me and doing my wife's makeup <laughs> and uh, you know doing that whole Kamloops marketing networking it's all good. dealio. It's my pleasure. Thanks and for having me. Thank you to everyone who is currently listening. Uh, thank you so much to Ready at Door for their $100 GC. So be sure to join the community group and get up to 1,000 members. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, you can support me, Cameo Podcast, uh, on Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Cameo Podcast. Please, please be sure to subscribe. Um, so I'm going to try and drop bonus episodes here and there. Uh, and I don't really have the time to always do the marketing and PR work I once did now that I'm starting to sign clients. So I need to, you know, tend to their business. So please subscribe. 
because this is my preferred way to reach out to you guys and uh, give you interesting updates on what I'm up to. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening to Cam- Cameo, Cameo's unscripted podcast. Bye-bye.